unemployment. So we can decompose unemployment into several groups. So we unemployment includes so-called frictional unemployment and structural unemployment. What's a frictional unemployment? The idea is very simple because job search takes time. So for example, if you are looking for a job, right? You may go to website like, so for example, Monster, or you use other social media websites. So for example, Glassdoor. Glassdoor job search, right? So first you have to look at all the job postings to find a job you are interested, right? Then you submit a res resume. If the company likes a resume, they may conduct several rounds of interview. Next, if the company gives an offer, but you may receive more than one offer, right? Then you have to negotiate with all employers about your salary, benefits, right? And eventually you're going to make a decision whether or not to take a job offer at a particular company. So this process takes time. So that is why, in reality, unemployment rate can never be zero because there are always people being unemployed. Why? Because it takes time for people to get a job. You can use a website like a Monster or Glassdoor. So frictional unemployment comes from job search because job search takes time. And the free frictional unemployment usually is short because people usually eventually, if they really want to get a job, they can get a job. But their educational background may not necessarily match the job they get. So for example, you may have a Harvard medical doctor degree, right? You can get a job working at the KFC frying chickens there, right? But even in this case, you'll be considered as employed by the US federal government. So this is a frictional unemployment. There's another type of unemployment called a structural unemployment. Structural unemployment has nothing to do with the job seeker. It is usually a long-term problem caused by government or corporate policies. So for example, minimum wage laws, labor union, and efficiency waste, and etc. Remember minimum wage law we covered before the first midterm exam. Some cities, like so for example, Seattle, So the current minimum wage, not the current, in the year 2019, I just Google the Seattle minimum wage, right? It's $12 per hour. But the Seattle is a very expensive city to live in. The CPI is very high in Seattle. So that means making $12 per hour may not be enough to make ends meet for workers working by hourly wage in Seattle. So the city may pass law imposing the so-called $15 minimum wage. Employers, they must be pay their hourly wage salary workers at least a $15 per hour, right? Remember from the supply and demand analysis, this is going to create a what? So-called labor surplus in Seattle. Because many workers, right, they may live in Idaho, Oregon, and if they have heard of $15 minimum wage in Seattle, they can move to Seattle looking for those type of jobs, right? From employer perspective, they may not be happy paying workers higher minimum wage. So they may cut positions available or they may cut jobs supplied to the labor market. This is going to create a winner-loser situation. Who are those winners? Those are people who indeed can get a $15 per hour minimum wage work in Seattle. Who are those losers? People who move to Seattle, right? Maybe from Oregon or Idaho, but they couldn't get jobs paying $15 per hour. Then they're the losers. That means they become unemployed. This type of unemployment caused by minimum wage law belongs to the structural unemployment problem. So in the end, how about we can decompose unemployment into three categories. So the total unemployment equals 
frictional unemployment plus structural unemployment plus what? Cyclical unemployment. 